Hey, this week in our Bible reading and reflection guide, we started reading the Old Testament book of First Kings. And yesterday's passage describes the, the transition of Israel's throne from David to his son Solomon. And David's talking to Solomon about some of the people who'd done him wrong and, and how after he dies, Solomon has to settle the scores. And so David does die peacefully and Solomon indeed has these enemies of David's killed. And as I'm reading this, my first thought is, my goodness, this sounds more like the Godfather than the Bible. Uh, there's a, a scene in one of the movies where, you know, Don Corleone the mafia boss, he's, he's you know, fading out and he's telling his son how he's got to deal violently with those enemies of his after he's gone. And then Michael, his son, actually does that. It was a really good reminder to me, though, of just a really important principle when we read the Bible, especially a lot of the historical books of the Old Testament. And that is this, what the Bible describes, it does not necessarily prescribe. <laughs> This passage, it describes a leadership transition that's marked by bloodshed and, and underneath you've got this thirst for revenge and, and jealousy and rivalry because two of David's sons uh, between them, because in large part they were born to different wives, you know, one of whom was more favored than the other. But the point for us, friends, is not that you know, we should be like David and Solomon here. No, the prescriptive what to do piece is in what he says to Solomon before he tells him how to deal with the enemies. Here's what he says. He says, be strong. Observe the, what the Lord your God requires um, and walk in his ways. Keep his decrees and commands, the requirements written in the law of Moses. In other words, do what God says to do in the Bible, which in his time were the books of Moses, the first five of what we call the Old Testament. And David then recalls a promise that God had given him before when he says, in essence, if you do this, if you and your descendants do walk in God's ways, Israel will always have somebody on the throne. The nation's going to be strong and prosperous. Great prescription and promise, isn't it? Uh, problem though is that Solomon himself and especially most of his descendants after him did not walk faithfully before the Lord. And eventually Israel fell to the Babylonians. And really, that's is our problem too, isn't it? You know, we know we're supposed to follow God's ways and lives he calls us to, do what the Bible says. And, and, and sometimes we do, but often and at many points we fail, don't we? And the good news though, friends, and is that the failure of Israel's kings and our failures too to live up to God's call to obey him and walk in his ways points us to Jesus, to the King, the Savior who did obey God perfectly and who teaches and models for us what obedience to God looks like just in day-to-day -day human life. So the takeaway from this passage is not go out and go all Godfather on people who've done you wrong <laughs> because remember what the Bible describes it doesn't necessarily prescribe. Do those seek to walk in God's ways as you find them in the scriptures. That'll please God and it'll be good for you as well. But also know, friends, that when you fail to do this, that in Jesus, you have a king, you have a savior, you have a friend who obeys perfectly, who stands before God the Father on your behalf. Well, thanks for your time today, friends, and keep on reading your Bible, reflecting on what it says and what God wants you to be and to do, and especially, especially let it point you to the savior, Jesus.